Okay, here Nabil mentioned few incidents. For example, he's talking about the execution of Banu Qureda to give you the exact reference which is mentioned in Bukhari. By the way, Banu Qureda was not executed by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He did not issue that decree. Rather, Banu Qureda themselves chose a man called Sa'ad bin Mu'adh who was an ally of Banu Qureda in the past. There is a huge history behind it. Many articles have been written explaining this history. Christian missionaries for some reason fail to understand it or do not want to understand it or if they understand it, they do not want to convey it to their masses. They deliberately deceive the masses into thinking that Muhammad was some sort of bloodthirsty uh, savage a'udhu billah, summa a'udhu billah who wanted to kill people uh, across the board. But if that was the case, what were the Banu Qureda doing in Medina in the first place? Who were the Banu Qureda? Who was this sub-tribe of the Jewish people living in Medina side by side with Muslims? What were they doing in the what, 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 what were they doing in this situation in the first place? How many other Jewish tribes are there? Did this policy apply to them? Of course not. So the background to give you a very quick summary is that, that there were many Jewish tribes and sub-tribes who lived around Medina when the Prophet was the sole ruler of the city and the Jews went into treaties with the Muslims. They signed treaties with the Muslims and they agreed that there will be no hostility from the Jewish side against the Muslims. And if anyone breaches the terms of the treaties, then of course they forfeit their protection. Right? So Banu Qurayda was one of those tribes that rebelled against the Muslims, joined ranks with the idolaters who were attacking the Muslims in Medina and this happened in year 5 of Hijri during the Battle of the Ditch. If you want to read the details, go to any basic book of the biography of the Prophet peace be upon him and you will see the details there. That Banu Qurayda among many of the Jewish tribes was one of those tribes that broke the treaty with the Prophet deliberately despite being warned to the contrary, they broke the treaty and they wanted to annihilate the Muslims um, uh, joining the idolaters in this particular battle. And after the battle was over, of course, the idolaters, they lifted the camp and they left. And Banu Qureda was left without any support from the idolaters. So the Prophet went to Banu Qureda asking them questions. So Banu Qureda, they refused to accept the arbitration of Prophet Muhammad. They said, we will only accept the arbitration of Sa'ad bin Mu'adh, who had known Banu Qureda in the past before the Prophet had migrated to Medina. They requested that we will accept any decree coming from Sa'ad bin Mu'adh. Any decree. Sa'ad bin Mu'adh was a companion of the Prophet who lived in Medina, who had allied with Banu Qureda in the past, who was an ally of Banu Qureda in the past before the Prophet came to Medina. So they trusted Sa'ad bin Mu'adh because they had a good relationship with him and they assumed that Sa'ad bin Mu'adh will be very merciful towards them when it comes to arbitration. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, accepted uh, their request and Sa'ad bin Mu'adh was requested to come and arbitrate. So before Sa'ad decided on the matter or before he uh, issued his decree, he stood up and he asked all parties to accept whatever he decides. He looked at the Prophet specifically and he asked him to agree if he decides something it will be followed. The Prophet gave his word that it will be followed. Banu Qureda also agreed that whatever he decides will be followed and accepted. Then he decreed that all the fighting men who were ready to fight and kill the Muslims not very long ago with the idolaters are to be executed as a result because they broke the treaty, they forfeit their protection and security and their women and children are to be taken into captivity. So this is exactly what happened at the time of Banu Qureda and this decree by the way was decided according to the biblical text which the Jewish people themselves believed in. The book of Deuteronomy, the book of Leviticus is full of laws uh, regarding book, the book of Numbers also. Uh, the Pentateuch, for example, the Torah is full of laws regarding how you deal with enemies or captives. So that very same law of the Bible, which Nabil shouldn't have a problem with, was applied on the Jewish people. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had nothing to do with this decree. He had already given his word that he will accept whatever Sa'ad bin Mu'adh decrees. Because there were two other sub-tribes who had done similar things with the Prophet, Banu Qaynuqa and Banu Nuzir. They were not executed. 
They were simply exiled because they broke the terms of the treaties. There were other Jewish tribes around Medina who did not break the treaties and treaties with them were confirmed. They were not touched, they were not pushed around, they were not harmed in any way. Rather, the relationship, the peaceful, cordial relationship with them continued. So Nabil Qureshi deliberately hides all of that. And not only Nabil Qureshi does that, all Christian missionaries I've come, I've come across, unfortunately all, I have to say all, I haven't seen one so far who has given the entire picture to the Christian audiences. We have to do it. All Christian missionaries, without an exception, deliberately hide these important facts, these important details for people to understand the circumstances of why the Prophet, peace be upon him, وسلم, agreed with that harsh decree of Sa'ad bin Mu'ad and as a result, Banu Qureda were executed. So always Christian missionaries will say, Muhammad executed them, Muhammad executed them. Actually, they executed themselves. They chose a man who decreed that they should be executed. The fighting men, by the way. Only the fighting men who were ready to fight and kill Muslims not long ago. So this is the background knowledge of the incident of Banu Qureda. Another incident Nabil referred to was that Muhammad tortured people to extract money from them. This is absurd. This is absolute shamelessness. Because this report... I think he's referring to a report in Ibn Ishaq and it is a fabrication, an outright fabrication. It is like me quoting from the Gospel of Judah, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene or the Gospel of Thomas or other apocryphal literature which the Christians do not accept today as a source of information for the Christians. It would be an absolute, um, uh, absolutely disingenuous thing to do and this is exactly what Nabil seems to have done so what Christian missionaries used to do and do to this day is they mix falsehood with some truth and even the truth has been manipulated or basic important facts have been completely taken away from the truth so the people have a very bad image of the Prophet so people think of Muhammad peace be upon him as some sort of bloodthirsty a uh, savage barbarian who wanted to kill people across the board. That wasn't the case. We see the Prophet Muhammad in a different light because we, see, we, we study his life holistically.